All right, hey everybody. I'm Mingus. Um, I'm a technical community manager here at Effect House. And today I will be showing you all how to do our talking potato effect. Um, that's one of our beginner effects that we have on our website. It's gonna show you some basic Effect House features um, with a focus on face inset. Um, so to get started, you will have the assets already and we'll provide those in the Discord after this, or you can grab them from our site. I already have them on my computer. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do for this effect is add a plane. So we're gonna go to add object, 3D, plane. I wanna say, feel free to ask questions as we go. You can use the Q and A and we'll get to all the questions after. Um, so we're gonna add the plane and this is where our potato is gonna live. Um, then we have to import our actual potato texture. So to do that, down here in the bottom left, we've got add asset, import from computer. And then here I have my assets already downloaded on my desktop. And there's my potato PNG. And this can be any PNG you want. You don't have to use our potato. Um, it can be something you've made yourself in Photoshop or an image you have the rights to use. So there I've got my potato imported. Now to apply it to the actual plane, I've got to make a material. So again, add asset, import, oh, add asset material, unlit. An unlit material for those who don't know is gonna be a material that's not gonna to react to our light up here. So it's gonna look flat at all times. So that's helpful when you're doing more cartoons or more 2D images that don't need to uh, show three dimensionality. Um, so here on our plane, I've got my unlit material. I'm going to move this down here. Now in the unlit material, you're going to apply a texture to it. So that's right here. And then I'm going to select the potato that we just imported. Boom. So now you can see it's loaded into our unlit material. And then I'm going to apply that to the plane. So if I select the plane here where it says material, I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna to apply to unlit. You can always name your materials and your textures and your objects if you want. So I'll name this plain potato just so I can keep track of it. And I can name this here potato material. Um, as you'll see this potato, it was a PNG but it's gonna show the whole plane right now in black. So what we wanna do is go into our material, drop down the render state and then here in blend modes, we have a bunch of different blend modes, but for this one, we're gonna to wanna to select transparent and that's gonna make it show up like we would want the PNG to show up. So with its, its transparent background not showing. Um, cool. Now you can scale this plane kind of to the size you want your potato to be. I'll do 2.5 by 2.5. So over here in the properties, you can see scale. I'm gonna add those numbers in. Another way to scale it would be here through these features. So if I do scale, I can scale it this way. Um, because it's a plane, it doesn't, the Z doesn't matter so much. So that's the depth of it. It's always gonna be the same. Um, so there, we've got our potato looking good. Obviously it doesn't track to me yet. It doesn't have facial features yet. So we need to add those. Next step is gonna be to add an object. And then you'll see in face effects, we've got our face inset. Boom. Um, so face inset, as you can see, is going to take a facial feature, it's going to crop it for you, and then it's going to track it to the face. Um, so we'll call this one mouth to keep track of them because we're going to add a few. And now we like the mouth is tracking to my head, but we also want the potato to track to my head. So I'm going to bring the potato by dragging it onto the face binding. And now the potato will also track to my head as well. Um, we're gonna want the potato to be at the top of the order. There we go. And then we're also gonna wanna click on our face asset depth tracking. So what that does, it just means that our mouth is actually gonna be able to detect the depths of objects and render accordingly. So right now, as you can see, my mouth is in front of the potato. We probably don't need the mouth so far in front of the potato. So with mouth selected up here, again, I'm gonna change its position. Um, so on the Y, on the Z, I'm going to make it maybe one that brings it nice and tight to the potato. Um, and we can move it down. 
boom. I think that looks good. If we had some engagement, I would say higher, lower. Um, cool. And now we are going to add the eyes. So in order to do that, I'm going to just duplicate this mouse. So you can either right click the mouse and duplicate. Or if you're using a Mac, you can do Command D, as you can see here. We'll duplicate it once, duplicate it twice. I'm going to name this one left eye, this one right eye. And then we have built into the assets different facial features. So with left eye selected over here, you'll see it currently says face area mouth. I want to change that to left eye. Again, when you're making your own, you can play with any of these. You could use the nose, you could use the eyebrows. But for the sake of this, I'll do left eye. And then for right eye, I will do right eye. They're hidden behind the mouth right now, which is why we can't see them. There we go. So left eye, I am going to pull up and over. Um, maybe I'll scale it down a little bit. So up here with left eye selected, I can scale it maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And I'm just typing that in. And then we'll get the right eye going up. Cool. And again, maybe let's scale that down a bit. 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. There's no rules to this part. You know, you could scale it three on this dimension if you wanted. You could scale it up on this dimension if you wanted. That's totally up to you and your creativity. I'm going to keep it proportional just for the sake of this demo. Um, yeah, I think I'll move this one a little lower. Cool, so once we like the way that's looking, the positions and the scale and the depth, um, the potato is, is, is done as an object. So now we've got to add in a little background. You don't have to, of course, we could be done right now. Um, this could just be our head tracking potato. For the sake of this demo, we're gonna bring in a background. So again, I've already got one made. When you're making a background in your photo editing software, you're going to want to make sure it's nine by 16. Um, that's just the dimensions that we work with here. So nine by 16 for your background. I'm bringing in my table background. Um, you're then going to do add object 2D image. Um, what just happened here and might happen for you is it brought my 2D camera and my canvas actually inside of face binding because I had that selected. Um, you can just pull them out and then it will look exactly like this. Um, and if you ever wanna check, you can just use the drop down. and now it's no longer in face binding. So when we bring the image in, it's gonna drop the image inside of a canvas. And a canvas is, you can't see it, but it's this space here that's filling the screen. And then the image is gonna live on top of that canvas. And then it needs a 2D camera because we're working with a 2D object. Um, so we don't need perspective for this. We just want our 2D camera to hit it dead on. Um, so we have our image, we have our table background. I am going to apply that texture here to our table background. Cool, looking good. Um, obviously to scale it up a bit. So I'm gonna see what our canvas is sized at. It's default to 720 by 1280, that's the resolution. So I'm gonna get this image to match. Up here in size, I can do 720 by 1280, cool. You can't see me for the moment, but I'm, I'm still here, bear with me. Um, in Canvas, you'll see we have match mode. Um, and what that means is as different devices are using it, you can make sure it always matches the height of the device, the width of the device. For the sake of this, we want it to fill it both width and height. So I'm gonna select fill. Um, and now to get the potato in front of this background, we just need to make sure that this 3D camera that's picking up the potato and the face insets is rendering in front of this 2D camera that's rendering the image. So you'll see the render order is 20 and this one has a render order of 10. So I just want to bring this one, if I do it zero, it will now render behind the 10. Um, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I am a potato on a plate. Um, I just want to show you all a couple ways to kind of mess around and make it your own. So in the face insets, you'll see we have all sorts of fun options. 
So we've got feathering, which I have applied right now. I'll take it off so you can see my right eye now has a bit of a harsher edge to it. With feathering, it's going to be a little softer. I can bring that way up and that will blur it out if we want to. Um, you can also add an outline to it of a color of your choice. So maybe if I add a black outline, let's see, and I make it thicker. Okay, it now maybe has more of a little bit of a cartoony look. Um, and I could apply that, of course, to all of them. Yeah, and again, I would play with size, I would play with scale, I would play with position, feathering, outline colors, um, which actual facial features you're pulling in. And then you can play with your background image and you can play with this actual image to make a bunch of fun little objects. And that is our talking potato demo.